Hey everybody, Taylor with KC here and welcome to the next KC Academy video. In this little mini series, we are covering all the different locations for mounting lights onto your off-road rig. And in this video, we're gonna cover roof LED light bars. Now there's a bunch of different names for them, but in general, roof LED light bars, overhead LED light bars, that's kind of the common terms for it. So in this video, we're gonna go over what they are, where they're mounted. It seems pretty simple, but we get asked it a lot, so we're gonna cover that anyway. We're gonna cover what they're good for. We're gonna cover what beam patterns they're typically used at. Then we're also gonna cover some of the downsides or some of the limitations of a roof LED light bar. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into everything you need to know about overhead or roof LED light bars. Okay, so as you can see right in front of me, this is our Gravity LED Pro 6 light bar. And this is the exact type of bar that might get mounted into a roof mounted scenario. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, overhead is typically the other common term that you're gonna hear for this, simply because it gets mounted over the head of your vehicle or over the windshield of your vehicle onto the roof of the vehicle itself. So that's the where of where these things get mounted. Now I wanna kind of quickly cover the how of these things getting mounted. Now, obviously this is gonna depend a little bit on what exact vehicle that you have yourself. So if you have something like a Toyota Tacoma, a newer Ford Ranger, a newer Chevy Colorado, something, a Ford Raptor even, something along those lines, there's obviously pre-dedicated mounting brackets specifically for your vehicle. For applications like this, for an overhead or a roof mounted light bar, there's not really a universal type of mount. Typically, it's always going to be vehicle specific. So once again, Jeeps, even side-by-sides, they all have a vehicle specific mount. Some of them mount on top of the roof onto the rain gutters. Some of them actually will kind of wrap around and you'll mount them inside of that door sill. Just two different options, depends on the manufacturer. Here at KC, we manufacture a lot of our mounts for the Jeeps and Toyotas, things like that. So we already have pre-buttoned up kits for overhead light bars. Now. The other kind of alternative for how to mount a light bar onto your vehicle in that overhead position is gonna be if you have a roof rack. So if you have a front runner roof rack, a Prinsu, one of our KC MRACs, things like that, a lot of those have dedicated different mounting systems for light bars, and that will also kind of determine the length of the overhead light bar that you get. So that's the what they are, that's the where they get mounted, and that's kind of the how they get mounted. Real quickly, I just wanna to touch on some of the most common sizes for overhead or roof mounted light bars. Now on a Toyota Tacoma, Rangers, your standard midsize pickup truck or Jeeps, a 50 inch LED light bar is pretty much common. So you'll hear it referred to as a 50 inch light bar, but a lot of the times they're actually closer to 51, 52 inches, somewhere in that range. You'll really just need to look at the specs just to make sure that it works exactly for your vehicle. If you're buying the light bar separate from the brackets. Now on vehicles like side-by-sides, maybe a Polaris Turbo S or a Can-Am X3, things like that, that's gonna be shrunk down to either a 40 inch light bar or a 45 inch light bar. Or on the flip side of the coin, bigger truck, a much wider truck, a Ford Raptor, for example, that's gonna be a wider 57 inch light bar. So the size of light bar that you need really depends on what vehicle you have and your specific mounting applications. So. With that, those are the basics of it. Now, I think it's time, let's dive right into the why of a roof mounted light bar and why it might be useful and what scenarios you're gonna wanna use this in. So one of the biggest myths that we hear a lot here at KC is that just the standard overhead 50 inch light bar is gonna light up everything. It's gonna be the be all, end all, do it all kind of light. And in reality, that's not always the case. When you are mounting a light in this overhead or roof mounted position, it's actually really specific towards what it does and what it does really well. Now, that means that sometimes mounting a roof overhead light bar is not gonna be the perfect solution for everybody. And that's often because this is something that is really meant for long distance performance applications. So it's not gonna provide in general a bunch of short to mid range coverage because this light bar mounted in this position overhead, think of it like when you're holding a flashlight up, right? You hold it up super high in order to see super far. So that's kind of the same scenario that an overhead light bar is used in. Once again, it's used for real long distance lighting. So performance oriented applications, 
in those vehicles that are capable of higher speeds, that is where an overhead light bar is really, really necessary. So if you're hammering out in the dunes and you're in your X3 and you're going 40, 50 miles an hour and you really need to see that long distance, that's when you might want to use something like this. If you have a pre-runner, a Raptor, things like that. Or if you have a Jeep that's actually fairly well equipped and you just like cruising some of the forest roads at faster speeds and you like to see what's out in front of you, maybe you want to make sure there's no deer or elk or anything like that coming up that's going to surprise you on those dirt roads, then that's when you want that long distance application light. So that's one of the big reasons of what a light bar is good for when you mount it overhead in the roof mounted position. The other, just totally honest reason is because it looks really good. Now we've seen this trend kind of evolve from, I don't know, over the last 15, 20 years when the LED light bars first became very popular. Um, now you're seeing a lot of people like this bigger look, the rounder look, it kind of feels a little bit more retro, but you get that total classic nostalgic appeal and that feel of what the big overhead lights used to look like, but now you get it out of one linked LED light bar that also has the best of all the best performance out there. So aesthetics and personal looks is another really big, really common reason for mounting an overhead light bar. Now, I'll be honest, it's not something that a lot of people think about, but we hear that at shows and at, when we're talking to folks a lot more than you might expect. It's actually a lot more common than we, even we expected at first too. So the third and final reason really kind of goes hand in hand with the performance side of things. And that is that it really rounds out the rest of the lighting package that you have on your vehicle. So if you already have a light setup like ditch lights and bumper lights, things like that, you've got your short coverage done, you've got your mid range coverage done, you've got your periphery coverage done, you already have that, right? So now to round out that full package, you're gonna need the long distance lighting application that's where mounting a light bar onto the roof really comes into play. So next up, let's get into how to aim the lights. You've already got it, everything's all set up, you've got it mounted, you've got your brackets done, all that stuff. Now it comes to light everything up at night. How do you need to aim these for the maximum benefit so that they can really perform to their highest potential? Now, there's a bunch of different ways people can talk about doing this, but because overhead light bars in general are meant to be long distance, they're not gonna provide a lot of short to mid range lighting. They're really meant to be used in conjunction with other lower mounted lights that you already have on your vehicle. Number one that everybody always has are headlights. So typically what you'll wanna do is use your headlights turned on, maybe even your, your uh, high beams or brights if you have brights or high beams that you actually like. Some people's vehicles doesn't really do a difference. So do whatever you're normally gonna drive with, right? Your, your low beams or your high beams, just get those, be on a flat, straight pointed road, somewhere it helps if you have a little bit of obstacles up ahead, some trees or something along those lines, um, further out down the road, that's gonna help you on this aiming process. Really, it's simple. Go out at dark, have your lights on, aim this light bar too high up. So just take this thing and aim it intentionally up at the sky, right? What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna then slowly tilt it down until you see that beam. It's gonna look like a wedge coming down and slowly begins to overlap with your headlight so that there's not a big dead zone of lighting in front of it when you're trying to see. So roughly we shoot for that 30% overlap mark. That's gonna make sure that as you're bouncing around, things are kind of moving some, I don't know if you guys are like me, my Tacoma, my headlights don't always, you know, stay where they're supposed to stay. They get a little loose. Um, so as things are jiggling, wiggling around, you're still gonna have a complete overlap of light exactly where you want it. So that's really only something that can be done, you know, at night, at dark, on a trail. When you're in the garage at home, you can get it roughly close, but you're gonna wanna bring your wrench and your socket out with you so that you can go ahead and aim that exactly where you want to get it. So with that, I think that's everything on the technical side of things. Now the last bit of information to cover is, well heck, what are the limitations of a roof mounted light bar? Is it all sunshine and roses or are there some actual drawbacks of mounting a light bar overhead? So let's get into that next. So there are some real inherent drawbacks to mounting a light bar overhead in that roof mounted position. It's really cool to look back at some of the history archives that we have here at KC. You know, back uh, in the early days when Pete, Peter Kim Brown, the K and KC, was first founding this company and was start, first started to get it up and running um, back in the late 70s, it's cool to look through some of those catalog covers because you'll see 
as you flip open those pages that Pete used to do big, long articles about high performance lighting and particularly where to mount them and how to aim them based on the conditions. So some of those inherent drawbacks that he talks about in that article that we still ring true today is the limitations that occur when you're in conditions that are, there are a lot of particles or sediment in that air. So what that causes, think dust, snow, fog, rain, anything like that, anything floating that's out in front of you in the environment, this light is gonna shine out it's gonna hit those particles and it's gonna reflect right back into your eyes. And so that's why a lot of people think, whoa, this is kind of blinding when I turn this on, if you're not using the overhead light bar in the perfect condition. So that's one of the big inherent drawbacks. So if we take a page out of the motorsports playbook, the Rob McCacherins, the concrete motorsports of the world, you'll notice in talking to them and listening to some of their interviews, when they're in the big heavy silt beds of Baja, or they're being they're chasing somebody that's right in front of them, they're, they're, that are being kicked up a bunch of dust in front of them, they won't even have the overhead lights on. They'll only use the lights that are kind of mounted in the grill or the bumper of their vehicle simply to avoid a lot of that light being reflected back into their eyes and blinding them. So. That's one big inherent drawback of it, is there's a, a, a limited set of scenarios that can use this overhead light bar because it is so performance, long distance, and very bright. So it's it's got this real oriented set of characteristics to it. So again, kind of plays in line with that whole thing is, hey, if you're going out with a whole bunch of friends in your Jeeps and you know, you're know you the trail lead, you have an overhead mountain light bar, sure, turn that sucker on. You can see for days in front of you, you can see elk or anything like that that are coming up in front of you. But if you're number three, four, five back in line, you got a few people in front of you and you turn this thing on, it's gonna be really bright and it's gonna really annoy those folks in front of you because of how bright that's gonna be in their mirrors or when they're taking turns, things like that. So that's one of the big drawbacks. Drawback number two, would be hood glare. Now, we've done the best that we absolutely can to minimize hood glare and glare off of your dash back into your eyes, things like that. And that's why it's so important to have an overhead light bar that is distance oriented, because if you turn this thing on and some of the cheaper light bars just light up everything, you get even more of that glare off of the hood. So that's kind of the same problem as the, um, as, as the reflection of dust or light off of dust back in your eyes is that can't really see. The whole point of having a light bar is so that you can see further. Now it's really cool. You can see back in the old days in some of our catalogs, we used to have these shields actually that would mount underneath the lights. And it was kind of like the little bucket of a shovel and it would just kind of mount under there and it would help kind of aim that light a little bit further. Today, you don't really need those so much because of the design and the geometry of the optics and the reflectors inside of all of these lights. It's so much easier with today's technology to produce something that doesn't have that amount of glare, but inherently it is still gonna be there. So number three, the third and final inherent drawback limitation to an overhead roof mounted light bar is going to be the wind noise. So it's very common for certain LED light bars to have this real annoying high-pitched whistling or whining type sound where you can kind of hear it when it catches the wind at a certain angle. That's one of those big drawbacks of them. Now, something like this, our Pro 6 LED light bar, because our engineers designed this to have the same shape as a water droplet falling through the sky, it really doesn't have a lot of that whistling. You can still hear it because there's still wind. It's a big surface area, so you can still hear it. It's just not quite as bad as that whistling. So that is another kind of inherent drawback of a roof mounted light bar. So with that, those are the big three. Number one, dust coming back at you. Number two, it's gonna be kind of that hood glare thing. Number three, you're gonna have some extra wind noise compared to not having anything up there at all. So just to summarize here, that's pretty much the big massive explanation for an overhead or a roof mounted light bar. There's a lot of really good characteristics about these things. They look good, they perform damn well, they see a, they, there's a real long distance lighting application for these things. But hey, there also are some inherent drawbacks at that same time. So 
Hopefully you found this video useful. If you really enjoyed this series, please let us know. Leave a comment below, maybe let us know um, other videos that you wanna see in this, in this series of the Casey Academy. Or heck, if you wanna check out some of the other videos that we've done on mounting locations for your off-road lights, just go ahead and click up in this corner and we'll link it right to the playlist. So with that, please give us a, a subscription. It really helps us out a ton. And thank you for tuning in. And remember to adventure further.